How's it going people? Welcome back to AFTV. It's the Supporters Club and we're back. It's the international break and I think it's the right time. I've got an esteemed panel of guests with me today. The presenters from AFTV are here themselves to be, you know, the, the pundits for once. Let's, let, let's, Don Robbie, nice to have you here, mate. You know what? Nice to have you. And you say the presenters and we've got a big announcement, people, yeah? The big announcement, right? Because... Turkish has officially joined AFTV. Turkish is now part of the team. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you can see, you. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you can see a lot more of him. You can see a lot of him, right? But no, listen, welcome on board, man. Love Rob, love oh, Rob. And you're going to be hearing a lot more about Kronke too. But, <laughs> but that's for another day. Oh, shit, that's I for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, man, that's what, listen, that's what I love about you. You, you speak your mind on issues. Mm. You know what I mean? You're a diehard um, gooner for years. And yeah, I love you. I love, you know, you've been doing Supporters Club for years as well. I love what you do, man. So it's great to have you on board. Nah, I really Fantastic. appreciate that. I really yeah. appreciate it. It's, it's up, a privilege up. to join the you team. I can't lie to you. But well done. Yeah. Initiation. We've not done yeah, ours yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to have to I've sing one of them Turkish yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, let's get back to it. And let's get back to the topic on hand. I think during this international break, there's not much left for us in the Premier League. Mm. The Europa League is the, the main competition for us. And let's discuss our strongest 11. Um, I did ask you guys before the show started to get your 11 sorted. So let's start with you, Rob. Right, what is yeah. your strongest Arsenal 11 moving forward? Here right. we go. Strongest Arsenal 11, I feel, this is mine. Everyone like, fit. And yeah, I've got to ask this. Everyone fit, everyone's playing everyone's at yeah. their very best. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, my okay. Okay. Is, everyone is, fit. Oh, here we go. Everyone fit, playing at their best. Leno in goal. <laughs> <laughs> no? No Robinson. <laughs> Cedric, mm. David Luiz, Gabriel, Kieran Tierney at left back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then in the middle, I'm, go I'm going for a 4 2 3 1. Partey and Xhaka, because I think Xhaka does play a lot better next to Partey, right? Um, then the three in front of them, on the right hand side, Saka. Yeah. On the left hand side, Pepe. Odegaard is number 10, and striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Okay, okay. Well, there's a few certies in there that I don't think needs much discussion, but I do want to hear the, the teams of Cecil and James before we get into some of those. Go on, after you, mate. After me, yeah? Yeah. All right, yeah. All right here we go. Okay, cool. So, Leno in goal, obviously. I'll yeah, go goes without um, saying. Yep. Yeah. For the back. Just. <laughs> oh yeah, he's been, some of his performances Robbie's been on his case recently. No, yeah, some, of, case. some of his performances recently, man. You know what I mean? Ryan's got to be knocking on the door if he keeps. But yeah, Leno. Mm. Leno and goal. I'm gonna. I've gone with a four-three-three. Right? right. So I've gone with the same back line as you. So that's why I'm gonna stick with that same back line. But the one in defensive mid, I want Partey in there. Right. And the two players in front of him, I've gone with Odegaard and Smith Rowe. Okay. So that's your okay. three. Yeah, that's my three. That's what I want to see. That's what I'd love to see from Arsenal and. That's, hope, that's my strongest. We saw um, it for the last 15 yeah. against West Ham. Mm. Yes, mm. Yeah, yes, so. yes. And, that's, and I, I, was, I was screaming downstairs here mm. about how amazing we were playing then, but we'll get to that later. And then um, the three up top, down the middle, one Lacazette, on the left, Bamiyang, on the right, Saka. Oof, some controversial ones there. James, what's yours? Oh, you got me thinking. <laughs> Come on, bro. Change up the form. I'll be, I'll be don't, honest. Don't be predictable. I, I was really trying to think along Cecil's so wavelength as well, but I can't, I just can't, for 10 minutes of Smith Rowe in midfield, as I thought, I just, I'm not sure. So I've gone with the same back five as Robbie and Cecil. Mm -hmm. Louis does get in there for me. Um, when he's playing at his best, he can be colossal. And I know what Louis can be like, but when he has those games, he's immense. Um, I've also gone for Partey and Jacker okay. Because when Jacker again, if we're saying everyone <coughs> at their best, he, he definitely brings an air of steel to the midfield, discipline, um, and he, he can be very this good at... Well, it's, yeah, <laughs> but, but positionally, no. Well, Rick cards and all that, anyway. Are you both yeah. chose Jack? I know, I chose Jack. Yeah. 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 No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. 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 I chose, chose Jack, Jack, but I didn't say yeah. this. I mean, what? Yeah. Force. No, I did, we'll, we'll but, but, pos positionally, you know, when everyone's charging forward and getting all excited, he's the one who sits back and he, he keeps his head a bit more in that sense. So mm. forwards are gone for Saka, Odegaard, and then Smith on the left. Okay. Um, and... I desperately want to get Lacazette in there, but if everyone's at their best, you can't deny Bamiyang's goal rate. Um, so Bamiyang up front. Might as well start on the on the back five. Well, let's say the back What's four. What's yours then? 
Well, I, this is where this is where we're starting. Right? Uh, 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 uh. Back five is pretty similar, but if I ask myself who's the top two performing centre backs this season for me, I'd say Gabriel and Mari, and that's untested waters. Now Holding's been tested and he's yep. let us down multiple times. Louise has been tested, let us down multiple times. Was he? Who? Louise, no yeah. one this season multiple times. Okay, not, not so multiple. much this season, but we got a reminder of that recently when he nearly gave it away against Olympiacos in our own six-yard box. Yeah. So that was just a reminder of what he can bring. <laughs> you know, it's nice him to remind us. It's yeah, it's like, you know, he likes to drop a little bit. A in gentle there, reminder. Yeah. So yeah. is it Gabriel Amari? I know they're both left-footed, and this is what commands the debate about the yeah. centre-back partnership. What's your thoughts on Gabriel Amari? I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I like Louise for one is offensive. Uh, Ackerman, but also the way he pushes the ball forward, and he's he was key when we didn't have the likes of Partey putting the ball forward to Odegaard or or Smith Rowe or the people into the creative creative midfield. David Luiz did them passes. I don't think Mari does that as much mm -hmm. as David Luiz. He doesn't start the attack like Luiz does. So I disagree with you with Mari. I, I admit he's he's been what well, he's good, but Luiz is essential in that, and his spirit and everything. If he's firing, he's definitely got to be in there. I think Murray. if we were a team that sat back a lot and played a tight back four, I'd say, yeah, what does it matter? Play two left-footed centre-backs. But it's like so crucial to what we do that the centre-backs split and they're hugging. The centre-backs are very much often hugging that sort of outer area of the penalty area. Mm. And to receive the ball and open up and the pitch is there is very different to if you're a left-footed centre-back playing on the right. And when you get the ball, you're turning straight back to your, your goal. And I think... That's where I do think it matters. Isn't there phases of play though where we go to a back three because one of the full backs push up? Now, yeah. obviously, this mm -hmm. season that's been Tierney more often than not, but that allows the right back to slot in, which allows two left footed centre backs to now become left sided and middle, which yep. accommodates more soul for it. Yep. And the reason I would put Gabriel on the right side is because he's more mobile. Mm. And I think it was an interesting proposition to have a, a more mobile left footed centre back on that side. Who knows? It might not work. Yeah. But with the work. players on hand. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with um, Louise, man. I, I, it, balance, man. Balance is, I think, that is very important when you're mm. at the back. And I feel... I, I, I don't think um, Louise has let us down much this season. I, I know he can be calamitous sometimes. Mm. But I also see a lot of leadership in him. Yep. Mm. Although I do see a bit of leadership in Mary as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be real with you as well, right? But I see a lot of leadership in Louise. And I just think that in the Premier League as well, he's more a seasoned campaigner. Mm. Yeah. That yeah. experience, that little extra bit of experience, he gets in for me. And then I like Gabriel. I like, I like you know, I think he's been our best centre back this season. 100%. Um, he had a little come out with the COVID and that, but he's come, you know, he came back, he's a little shaky. Yeah. But now he's FIFA. back. I, I think he's back now to his best. I, I, mm. I was surprised the game the other day when we played, <coughs> excuse me, West Ham, that he didn't start because I was mm. like, Mikel Antonio. Yep. You've got to have Gabriel in there because he's always up for the physical battle as well. Yeah. And he's quick. So that's why, for me personally, I'd have him in there. Isn't it a good, <laughs> yeah, it's a good conversation, yeah. right? That's we're good. saying centre-backs, yeah. we've actually got a few decent mm. ones. Is this Arsenal yeah. talking about? This? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, did not it? It's yeah. Pablo Mari, Pablo Mari, a lot of people, you know, we, we're liking him as well. So mm. He yeah, deserves you know, credit. Holding can, you know... Holding Holding's can, had you know, an okay you know, season, okay season yeah. in fairness yeah. as well. Yeah. Holding is held his own this season yeah, let's yeah, just say yeah, but yeah same yeah. with Louise I think it's not multiple yeah. mistakes but it's just all of a sudden yeah. where your centre backs come from I'm happy no, with that. Callum Chambers is, can yeah. still play yeah. My rappiness is out on low. Yeah. Yeah. Saliba coming back as well. Saliba. Saliba. Bro, we've got Calm Jesus down, Christ. guys. Calm down. Yeah. We're, getting ca we're getting carried away. <laughs> we're getting carried away. <laughs> it's true. Not, I've heard fans what? say, I've heard fans say that we need, we need to strengthen our centre backs. I, I disagree massively. I think we have a lot of yeah, a lot of strength at, 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 in that position. I so. forgot Saliba. Saliba, mm. could, you know, you've got Saliba and Mavrapanos, yeah. mm. who potentially could come. And Rekic. Like, both having good luck. Oh, yeah. We signed Rekic in January. Yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 Only 200 million and 15 centre-backs later. <laughs> <Yeah>. Finally, <laughs> found <laughs> ourselves yeah. a good yeah. Yeah. It took us about 10 years. To it, and two Gabriels later, yeah? Because remember, we signed Gabriel oh, Paulista, yeah. so oh, yeah. we, oh, yeah. we had a few in there. Oh, yeah. True. It's finally so it looks like you guys have won the centre-back debate in terms of... Three, oh, yeah. three votes for Louise and, and Gabriel and one oh, for no. Gabriel. Yeah, now assured. the centre mid is one. Well, I'm going to go four two three one. 
But this is another one that I didn't hear my so combination. Two, three, yeah. Uh, so I'm going Partey. Are you squeezing yeah. Ceballos in there? 100%. You know me, James. Because I'm going to turn to you and say, okay. who makes the most tackles in the middle of the park for us when Xhaka and Ceballos play? Look, I was wrestling with this as well, man. So I, I think Ceballos is wildly underrated by our fan base. I know he's made mistakes. Change I know he's a lone player. Change the tune. Change I know, the tune. but hold on. But I just got to a point where I think when they're at their very, very best, I'm disagreeing myself, man. Do you know what it is with Ceballos and the same with, I could say, with Louise? It's a case of it's by force that this is the, the, the crop we have. I'm not happy with Ceballos overall and his impact over the last two years, but technically he's definitely better than Xhaka and El Nene. And also, in terms of statistically, he gets a lot more tackles in you per can't, game. Again, though, balance, man. You can't have Ceballos next to Partey. Right? I, I, I agree. You, Xhaka, like I think it was you said, he brings a bit of steel. That's one thing I always say about Xhaka. He <laughs> discipline. When yeah. he's here. He brings a bit of steel to the midfield, right? <laughs> <laughs> when he's here, the discipline. I didn't yeah. say discipline. You like that word discipline steel. now, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Steel yeah. And discipline he's got discipline. <laughs> no, because he's capable of what we've seen with him. He's capable of gripping people up and getting sent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's not discipline. That's, mm. that's using the steel in the wrong way. But I think he brings a bit of steel and toughness out midfield. I think defensively he's better. He can drop back in, he can help out the defenders. And I'm sorry, man, Sabayas. On quite a lot of games this season, he's been very, very sloppy mm. in that midfield area, an area that you cannot afford to be sloppy in. In the Europa League, right, in, <laughs> in both games, he nearly yeah. cost us. Yeah, I remember that. Ben Fico, yeah. Now, I like Sabayas, right? And I like he's, he's got a big art on him. He, you know, he, he gives everything when he goes out on that pitch. But I just think, again, I'm just thinking balance. But if we talk about it's nearly cost us, so, the phrase nearly cost us, yeah, you could that can go to multiple midfielders. Yeah, and Jack is another one. Uh, Jack over the years has cost us. Like, can I say, has, nearly, El ne has El Nene cost us as much as Sabayas and Jack this season? No, so, so but why, why are we having this argument? No. So what, no, no one's going to consider changing the formation to a 4-3-3 three, three and have just one whole defensive midfielder. I'm weary of what um, Robbie's saying in terms of the, the back line still needs some protection. You know, We're better overall structurally because mm. the, the two in front have improved in a sense, especially okay. with Partey coming in. I think I, you, I like if you that. leave one man there, that's the most attractive proposition, yeah. definitely. Mm. Definitely, but a bit of sense to it, I'd have to put two back, knowing that David Luiz is in your mm. is in your pairing. Interesting. Okay, well, that's a fair point. I just think Partey can can be that one man, and a lot of people are going to be arguing about Xhaka and Sabah. he's a defensive midfielder, though. He gets forward a lot, doesn't he? He's, 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 uh, a good point. He's a, he's a box to box midfielder. Yeah. I, I think, think he can be. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think, he's, dis I think he's disciplined. So yeah. I mean, but, but another big part is that our <laughs> I hate you. another big part is our full backs get so high up the pitch. So having your two centre backs, two holding yeah. midfielders makes sense. We look at City who play the one holding midfielder, they're you know, I'm getting really boring and technical here, but their wing backs are inverted. They sit mm. in, they protect. So even City, the very best teams and the best players, have balance. So and I think when you mentioned Ceballos, uh, even though I was wrestling with it. Ceballos is silky, he's creative, he's nice on the ball, but how much end product do we get from those specific attributes? I'd argue very little actually, even if he's played... When Ceballos is playing well, it's because he's turned past a few players, shown yeah. some skills, some trickery, and we love it, but there's very little actual end product behind it mm. all. And Jacker, in fairness, whatever you want to say, and I'm one of his biggest critics, you know, he is disciplined, he, he does rack up those tackle numbers, interceptions, he holds his position, so... Yeah, Jacker just gets in there for me. We've got two votes for Jacker. It looks no. like my man's made it in the middle. Really? Is yeah. that what we're going to go with? Oh, that's annoying. I know, it's just annoying. I just don't think these that 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 three or Tobias and Jacker, they're not going to be there. Uh, well, we know this team now. so far can concede a goal with Louise and Xhaka in the lineup because that's what's happened so far. But <laughs> all right, yeah, go on. We'll move. Yeah, we'll move concede forward. it with Tobias there too. Well, true, yeah. true. Yeah. And to be honest, when you look at that Man United game for one, El Nene done very well next to Partey. El Nene actually yeah. freed Partey up a bit more. He's not yeah. a natural DM, but that's true. But he's, again, El Nene's a guy that you know, he can get bullied off. Yeah, but if he's better, <laughs> if he's we've got off of the best. <laughs> I think El Nene's. Him and Partey are pairing. I know I didn't put that, but if you're going to their best, they had a good game. So it's United. Lovely compliment with each other yeah. because they're quite, um, <laughs> no disrespect to Partey or, or trying to <coughs> hype on any, but they're quite similar in terms of attributes. Yeah. They like to be very dynamic, box to box. Yeah. I think Partey's more naturally skillful, but it kind of, it works. One presses, the other sits. One presses, the other sits. It kind of, Mm. It works well at Old Trafford. Shame we haven't seen it much since. Yeah, and no one's, no one's picked it. We're yeah, no, can I, can no, I no, take no. the vote away from <laughs> Xhaka or are we going with it? All right, we'll yeah. go with it. All right, so Xhaka Partey is the two. So it's the three behind now. And we had a different company. Well, what was your three behind? It was Saka. Saka. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Saka, Odegaard and Pepe. Pepe. Cecil? Saka, Odegaard and Pepe. I had a two in front of Partey of Emil Smith-Rowe and Odegaard creative at you yeah. and intense. So pressure. knowing you have to change that now, what would your three be? Oh, no, no, no. I, well, I don't well, I have to change my four. Whoa, whoa, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's been... <laughs> no, as long as I've got the same players in. So I've got the two there and I've got Saka, Aubameyang and Lacazette. So who would... So you, you basically put in... Odegaard or Emil, so you have to pick one of Odegaard and Emil Smith. Oh, right? you lot. Wow, I've got to change my formation now. Yeah, man. That's, that's what you lot do. That's the game. We're going with our current formation, which is 4 2 3 1. Boring, man. We want to see Arsenal play the 4 3 3. You lot. Yeah, we're, we're going. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. All right. Um, obviously, I'd have Odegaard um, in that 10 role. Sack on the right, and I, oh, it's hard. I feel bad for Emil Smith, but Sack on the right, Bamang on the left, and Lacazette up top. And your one was. Um, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, Saka, and then um, a Bamming up front. I think I'm with you, Rob. Saka, Odegaard, and Pepe. Mm. That's my three. Um, Odegaard being above Emil Smith Rowe, obviously, mm. that's, a, that's a conversation. Mm. Mm. That is What's a conversation. the difference? Because for me, one's a lot more energetic, one's a lot more pass and move, <laughs> one's a lot more getting into the box at the right time, whereas Odegaard's a lot more of assessing the situation. Mm slowing down the play around him, mm -hmm. dictating the tempo between yep. the line. I think match, that's what match I prefer. Fit, yeah, match fitness has come into it as well. I think when I watch a Mill Smith row, I think lasting the full 90 minutes at optimum level, I see that more from Odegaard than I do Smith Rowe. That's I, I just <coughs> Odegaard for me, natural number ten. Mm. Yeah. The archetypal, yeah. You see him when he, he you know he, he orchestrates. Mm. Smith Rowe reminds me of like Aaron Ramsey where he's that late arriving player into the box, energetic, you know, you're sort of, a bit like almost like an old fashioned midfielder. Mm. I love him. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, yeah him. this is no... Um, yeah. I think, I think he's more likely to score a goal, even though Odegaard has scored goals recently. I think Smith Rowe would be more likely to score than Odegaard. But for me, against in it's balance for me. Odegaard just brings a better balance to the yeah. team playing in that position. Mm. Mm. And credit to Emma Smith Rowe, because he can, do stuff on the left as well because he has yeah. had a couple yeah. of good performances yeah, there. We've gone from having yeah. no one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, again. Yeah. Right. No one there, a bit like the same bit of the centre backs, isn't it? We had nobody there. Now we've got, you know, we, we can argue about two potential mm. players who can play that position, which yeah. is great news. And they're both very young, mm. although one of them ain't now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guy, you know I, mean? yeah. So. I forced Smith Rowe in there on the left just because, um, of, you know, what he did in that North London derby uh, against Chelsea as one of his debut. There's just been a few performances where I kind of love. He's got this unique ability to create without the ball. Yeah. You know, he'll move, but it opens space. And he goes, and I, and I think it was the West Brom game. Do you remember we scored that lovely goal was flipped around the corner, he scored oh, it for yeah, Saka. Yeah. That was just pure movement. Mm -hmm. That was just really intelligent moving and getting to different pockets. And a lot of the time, there was a period maybe a month ago, people saying, well, Smith Rowe looks like he's dropped. I don't think he had. I just don't think a lot of his great work happens off the ball. Yeah. Um, I, I love him and he's a hell of a And especially boy. when he comes yeah. out of nowhere because the, the team lacked yeah. energy. So yeah. when Emil Smith Rowe comes mm. in, you can see the energy. But after mm. about three games, you get used to that energy. Yeah. So then it becomes a, that's a normal Emil Smith Rowe yeah, performance. Yeah, yeah. That's it, absolutely. I mean, there's an argument for A. Aubameyang being, being on the left if you want to force Lacazette, and we'll chat about yeah. that in a sec. I, I'd argue if Martinelli's at his best. Whether that's something in Pepe. Yeah, Pepe I'm, I'm mm. glad you two mentioned Pepe because yeah, when he's at his best, I think few compete with his productivity in terms of goals, assists. He was not direct. playing well. More direct. Yeah, the thing, that's you know. the thing about with me. <clears throat> a lot of times when I look at team, we're in those forward positions. I want players on the pitch that with end product that are going to be relied upon that can score or assist and that. And I look at it, Odegaard, end product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smith Rowe, if you had him in end product, but Pepe. Pepe, he's always he's he, after after Aubameyang and Lacazette. Who's the most likely person in that team to score a goal? That's a good point. Pepe, mm, yeah, yes, yeah, right. True. And he's and you know even a game against West Ham, mm. I thought he could have had a couple of goals in there, but he did get the assist. Great yeah. assist, which was a great assist. He, he's one of those players that can make things happen. Mm. I agree with that. I don't think that guy realizes how good he is. Yeah, he's a, he's a real top quality player, but he doesn't. Yeah, that's so true, you know. I don't think he knows how he good he is. He I look at him, I'm mm. like, you're over six foot, you're, you're, you're strong, you're fast, you're skillful, you've got a really good end product. A lot of players um, that are typically wingers are very skillful but don't have the end product. If anything, he's got that more than the, than mm. the build-up and the drive. And he, he's got it all. And 
I look at him, I think, you've got all the attributes. You're like, or maybe that's where my frustration comes. Some, maybe, maybe it's the attributes we can't see physically that is the problem. That's, that's the, yeah. you know, a lot of footballers fall down mentally. Mm. You know, we can have yeah. an abundance of quality, but mentally pressure gets mm. to you, you know, move to a bigger club can get to you. Mm -hmm. And how do you react? Do you fight back? And it looks like he is fighting back, or do you put your head down and, you know, I, move I, on? I, I agree with you there, Turkish. And I also think it has, it might have some um, relation to the style of play that Arteta wants him to do and the things he wants him to do. He might be overcoached, and I think that can sometimes close down his creativity and how he really wants to play. That is my personal opinion from what I see from when I watch him play. I feel mm. he has all the ability, but sometimes the style of play and how Arteta, I think, wants him to execute, because I've seen, I've heard Arteta in press conferences say, he needs to be more consistent. He, he needs to work and um, work with the team and play the way that we've been we've gone through the week. So that is another thing I really believe mm. is what's. But what's I think Arteta's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Arteta's right because you know, and a lot of people give Arteta a lot of credit when he's at City for raising Sterling's game, mm. and I think that's what he brought to a lot of Sterling's game and a bit more all-round game as yeah. well. You know, yeah, and I agree. So I don't know, man. Pepe again. I look at. A, Pepe as a player, and I'm like, you know what, if you get on it, really get on it from now till the end of the season, we could actually, hmm. Europa League's not out of our thinking we'll for stop. guy, but we need we'll somebody stop. like him to be at his best. Yeah. Because if he's at his best, he can score goals, he can create assists, he can create havoc. Yep. And but then he, he can turn up on another day and we might as well be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But we need to argue. Yeah, we need to argue a bit more. I think I was just I was kind of speaking about Pepe there, but we need to argue a bit more in the sense of wait. So but I've got a bang on the left and Lacazette up top, and what? There's no one else got them both in. Is I've got. I've, I've, I'm I'm with James on this one. Right, a Bamiang, his goal scoring records. I, I just look on it like this, right? If and even though he's missed chances recently, mm -hmm. though, but if it comes down to the Europa League final, yeah, and him and Lacazette are through one on one on goal to win a sit. And I know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm, 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 I'm going to miss that one on one. Yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my stab. It's replaying in my head. If, right if now. they're one on one, my money's on Aubameyang to score it. Mm. I'd agree with that 100%. And that's why for me, yeah, I would too. He, Lacazette's I more instinctive. He's not had a great striker. season, but, you know. Yeah, 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 that word, instinctive. That's Lacazette what Lacazette is. is. More, you know, the goals he scored against West Ham, he had no time to think about it. Yeah. Touch, swivel, bam. Yeah. Crossing the box, header, bam. Lack of, I love Lacazette, I really do. I don't think he's had a really hard ride from Arsenal fans. I agree. Um, I love Lacazette. But mm. Aubameyang, for me, is an elite goal scorer. And even this season, who everyone's saying he's having an awful, awful season, he's got 14 goals in all competitions. If he gets another six more and 20 goals a year is, is an awful season, I'll take that any day. I think Lacazette's quite an instinctive finisher, though, guys. I think we're giving a bit of a hard time saying that. And then, like, goals he scored recently, he's turned on a swivel, volleyed it. A lot of his goals have been one-touch finishes as well. He's quite instinctive as well. I think. No, that's what we are no, saying. He is instinctive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I said Lacazette's instinctive. The more, actually, he's too, in, well, yeah. not too instinctive, but that's, that's his attribute. Whereas if he one-on-one -on -one and uh, composure... Oh, you want for me, Yeah, okay, uh, I, I can agree yeah. with that. Aubameyang is more of a natural goal scorer to me. Yeah. So why would you yes, not put both? We should not put both in the team because you said to me, we well, look well, at people listen, I'm not just shoe. I'm not just doing like you and Shu. You're in it. Hey, don't try to like this is, goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'll tell you what. I, let me put Martinelli in there. Let me put this man. Let me put, what about <laughs> yeah. William? You know what I mean, let me put no, these no, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't get. You can only pick eleven man. Yeah, you can only pick eleven players. We're the strongest team, Robbie. For the strongest Arsenal team, all on firing. You, how would you not have? Do you know what? I was struggling. I was gonna put. Lacazette and Aubameyang yeah. in. I was, right? But then I just thought to myself, Pepe, he scores goals and creates. I'm like, on that wing, nah, Pepe. And Lacazette's been so fit over the last four years, but has he ever been firing? Do you think I think 18-19 when he won our Player of the Year award. When he got 15 that year. Huh? Did he get, he got 15, I think. 15 or full so, Something like that. Yeah. Which kind of tells the story in itself. Yeah. You know? That, that's a, a very good point. No, because you <laughs> got, the way I look at Lacazette is, listen, I, I, I love him. His mm. character and the type of person you can tell he's, a, he's an asset to the dressing room. But we had bought Giroud for 16, 17 mil. We replaced him with Lacazette for 50. And he hasn't even has been as productive as Giroud ever was at our club. Mm. You know, Giroud scored 16 goals one season, for example, and Lacazette mm. hasn't even reached that amount. And then now we're crying out for a striker that's a bit different to the strikers we have. So with Lacazette, it's a shame it hasn't worked out, but it just reminds me of another bad decision this club made. 
But does Lacazette make you want to tear your hair out like Giroud no. did? I watched no. some games with Giroud and I thought, oh my word, you know, it, look, Giroud <laughs> is clearly proven to be a, a good striker <laughs> and he's had a very good career. But I don't know, I, Lacazette, I think when he's not scoring the goals, I see other things I'm getting from him. I think the problem is Giroud was the starting striker at Arsenal Football Club. We didn't get to see him as the backup to Abba. And I think we would have appreciated him a lot more in that position. When you're starting, the pressure's on you. When yeah. you're coming off the bench, people understand what you're bringing. Whereas Lacazette's come in and been mm. the starting striker. So he's been measured to that level straight, you know, straight away in comparison mm. to Giroud. But I do agree with you. you know, there was times Giroud missed big chances that year we Monica finished second. No. Well, that year we finished second. There was a yeah. lot of chances he yeah, missed yeah. that year. You know, so. I'm... I'm still quite angry to know if you're going with what I've, what I've spoken about. I want to know what team, how does your team win, you guys' team win, if you've got a team that sits back, does low block, and a very physical. How, where are your goals coming from? Saka and Pepe is the oh, direct. Pe Saka, yeah, on, Pepe, Aubameyang, I'll, I'll you need all the guard to break it down. And I'll so flip that no, to you. So you want Aubameyang to be the creator off the left against a low block? Not the creator, Lacazette wasn't on the left for me. He can be... No, Aubameyang. Yeah, he can, well, he can be... Lacazette holds up the defence line, brings other players in. We've got Odegaard, I've got in there as well, Saka. I'm thinking when the team's set deep, you, what have you guys, you've got Aubameyang, obviously he can't run in behind. I just think... And you've got Pepe, he's, if he's getting roughed up, I think he's never, his headspace is not really always in the game when he's got physical opponents. Yeah, I, I, I think that team would be, able to, would be good enough to break down low block teams. Yeah. Right? You know I mean, you've got, you've got players there, right? Because one of the things that we don't do enough sometimes when we play in these low block teams, and there's only one player who was doing it consistently this Shit. season, and it's Saka, is you get the ball and you run, run at those drive. defences, man. Mm. Yeah. You run at those defences, give them a problem. Mm. You can't just pass, pass, pass it around because they'll just sit in formation and yep. soak it up. But what Saka does really well, and that's why you having Pepe in there, yeah. those guys will run and they'll take on a player and they will draw a foul or they will, do, you know what I mean? And they, they will free up spaces for other players. So. I think it's good enough to break down. Yeah, yeah, I think like you said, fit and firing, it has to be Ober up top. It has yeah. to be Ober up be, top. Man. Has to be. So that's it. Yeah. That's the strongest 11 that's then. That's the strongest 11. Yeah, so You're we've right. got Saka, <laughs> Saka, Odegaard, Pepe with Ober in front. And then we had Jacob Partey behind, Gabriel Luiz, the centre-back pair, and mm -hmm. Cedric on one side, Tierney on the other, and Leno in goal. Happy with that? Well, not, you, not you, Cecil, but... Yeah. I want my 4-3-3 with Aubameyang. <laughs> Cecil wants his 4-3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Cecil wants Balogun up front. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Elliott right back. <laughs> Listen. Get all your attackers on the pitch. Goals, goals, goals. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed. Listen, this has been the Supporters Club. Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments. Tell us your strongest 11 in the comments below. Hit the like button, subscribe, do all of that, people. Love for you guys coming on, as usual. Take care, people. We're out. Welcome aboard. <laughs>